Hi everyone, this is Dan here. Um, today I'm going to give you a quick overview of a service called Pathfix. Um, Pathfix allows you to make OAuth-based API calls um, from your bubble application um, without having to worry about all of the complexity of storing tokens and refresh tokens and things like that. Um, so what I'm going to do today is just show you um, how to set up an application in Pathfix um, and what you need to add to your bubble app to serve up that OAuth authentication flow that you might be used to to your users. Um, and then finally, how to make an API call. This isn't meant to be like a full step-by-step -step tutorial. Um, Pathfix have already provided some documentation and resources on this um, if you want to follow along. And uh, I'm sure we'll be providing you know, more resources um, in the future as well. So to get started, head on over to pathfix.com and create an account. Um, once you're signed in, this is gonna take you to your, um, your dashboard. So the first thing you need to do is just click add application. Um, and give it a name. So you can give it whatever name you want. I've already created one called Demo Application 2, so I'm just gonna go on over into there. The first thing you'll see is a list of all of the services that uh, Pathfix currently integrates with. Um, so you might see some here that you've used in the past or some that you intend to use in the future. Um, a lot of exciting options here. Um, today we're gonna use the Twitter API um, and we're just gonna make a simple call to get the recent tweets for um, a logged in bold user. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just click on Twitter. Um, at this point, I've assumed that, um, you know, I've already created a developer application on Twitter. So I've gone to developer.twitter.com, um, created an application and I have, you know, I have that set up approved and I have my client ID and client secret ready to copy across. So the first thing I need to do is take this redirect URL and copy this into my Twitter developer app. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do that. It's pretty straightforward and Pathfix provides, again, some, some documentation for some of the apps in their list. Um, but all you need to do is copy that over and, and include it in that redirect URL. You then take your client ID and client secret from your Twitter account um, and paste them in here. So I'm not too worried about you seeing these. I will regenerate them afterwards, but you would just grab them from your Twitter developer account um, and paste them in here. So I'm going to hit save and what that's going to do is it's going to scroll us back to the top and it's going to leave us with this uh, Twitter tab here. So I'm going to go ahead and just test the connection and just make sure that I've, you know, I've got everything right before I start trying to develop with it. If you haven't done this already, yours would probably say connect to Twitter, but I'm going to hit reconnect. And this is what your user will see when they, you know, click a button in your application and hit authorize app. It's going to do everything it needs to do. It's going to take you back to Pathfix and um, it's going to basically authenticate you as a user. So if I just close out of this and go to accounts very quickly, you'll see dantidmus88 gmail.com is, is kind of already, uh, already registered there, which is great. Pathfix also provides some um, kind of nice sample methods just to validate that you've got everything working there. So I can make a quick call to the Twitter API for verifying credentials for that user, and I'll see that it returns the right stuff. So my screen name, Daniel Tidmus, my bio, um, et cetera. So that's step one, that's everything done on the Pathfix side so far. Um, the next step is to add the code for OAuth authorization into your bubble application. So the way this works is um, Pathfix provides like a small UI that we can include in our bubble application and the user can click on this and then it will take them through that full OAuth flow with the provider of your choice. So in our case, it's Twitter. Um, you can see it says connected and disconnect here. That's because I've already authorized my test user but it would just say connect for a, for a first time user. There's a few different options here um, for UI and I do believe you can now add custom CSS styling to this so you can really make it you know, look and feel as part of your app. Um, but there's two very simple things you need to do. You need to copy this script here at the top and add this to your page header and you need to add this script here and add it to your page body. So one thing to point out, my bubble application is not on a paid plan. So Bubble only looks at uh, page HTML headers if you're on a paid plan. So I'm just gonna add all of this to the, the, the HTML element that I add to the body. Um, it's still gonna work with a few drawbacks, like it's not gonna automatically refresh once I authorize, but don't worry too much about that. You should add it um, in your page HTML header on a paid plan. So let's just copy that. Go over to my Bubble app here's one I created earlier. So as you can see, I've just got a very simple app here. I wanna display a list of tweets for the user down here. I've added an HTML element to the page and I've just made it so that it's only visible to the user once they're logged in because we don't want unauthenticated users to you know connect to their their bubble app to um 
to Pathfix. So I'm going to copy that header code in. And the only thing I'm going to change here is this stuff in square brackets here where it talks about user ID. All you need to do here is provides a unique reference to the logged in user in bubble. So obviously we already have that by going, you know, current user unique ID. You could use an email address here as well, but I'm just going to use unique ID here just for, for the purposes of this demo. All this is doing is it's saying when the user clicks on this button and authorizes tie this bubble user to the, the entry and path fix so that whenever they make calls from their logged in app, we know which user to, you know, authenticate them with. Okay, so go back to Pathfix, let's copy this. So this is the actual bit that's gonna kind of render that button. Um, so again, if I just paste this underneath here, um, and that, that's effectively it. So like I said, ordinarily this top bit would be in your page HTML header, and this bit would remain in this HTML. But it's gonna work um, just fine as is. So let's go to the app itself. So I've gone to preview, and you'll see that I don't see this HTML element, that's fine, because I'm not logged in. Let's go and log in as a user I created earlier. So that's gonna log me in and fantastic. Okay, I can see this now. So one thing you'll notice if you go to Pathfix and go to accounts, you can actually see a list of you know, users who've already authenticated. So if you had 10 bubble users, you'd see them all here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just authorize this, this user account just to show you what happens. So takes me out to Twitter, I'm already signed in. If not, it would ask me to sign into my Twitter account. And I have the option to authorize the app or cancel. Um, with some of the services that Pathfix integrates with, um, you have a choice of like which scopes you want. Um, Twitter's a little simpler than that, so didn't need to worry too much about that. This is what they give you access to. So let's hit authorize. That's gonna redirect us back to our bubble app. And if I just refresh the page, you wouldn't have to do this if, it, if that code was in the HTML header. Okay, great. I can see that this user is connected and I have the option to disconnect. Go to Pathfix and just refresh that account list. And I now see that this unique user ID from Bubble is now connected to an account in Pathfix. Fantastic. Okay, so that only leaves us one more thing to do and that's to actually make a call to the Twitter API. Um, I'm just gonna show you up to the stage of actually initializing the call. I'm not gonna show you how to use this in your app yet. Um, we'll probably provide more video resources on that in the future, but Pathfix um, works a little bit differently. So ordinarily you would be calling the Twitter API directly and you'd be saying, you know, you'd be probably doing a get request to get the recent tweets for that user. Pathfix works a little differently and they have something called a pass through API. So what you're effectively doing is you're making a post request to labs.pathfix.com and in the body you're specifying the API endpoint on Twitter that you want them to call. So you're effectively saying, hey Pathfix, I wanna make a call to the recent search um, endpoint in the Twitter API. Um, and here's my user ID. Can you please make that call on my behalf? Sign it with the user's credentials and then return the results to me. So what we have to do is let's first just dissect this URL. So I've just copy and pasted this into a doc um, so I can just show you what's going on. So it's a post, um, it's a post request. It has a URL and what I've done is I've just broken it out. So there's actually three query string parameters here. There's a user ID, there's a public key and there's a private key. So, okay, we know that we have to then recreate this URL somehow in our API connector in Bubble. Um, again, if you're, a, if you're a beginner to APIs, this might be a little high level, but um, just bear with me and I'll show you what this looks like. If I go to plugins, I've already installed the API connector and I've actually already set this up, but I'll just talk through how I did that. So if you add an API connection, let's just call it Pathfix. I know out of all of the authorization or authentication methods that private key and URL is the right one to choose. And I know that because there's a private key in the URL. So I add that, I add the key name is private underscore key, which um, Bubble actually already you know, preempts, but fortunately that matches what's going on here. And then I just copy the key across as well. So I've got the key value and the development key value. Um, for every call to Pathfix, it, it uses JSON. So I've added a shared header to just accept um, JSON as both body and, and, request, and response. Um, that'll just be kind of static across every request you make. So that's the beginning part. The second part is then you need to um, basically make that first call to Pathfix to say what you wanna get from the Twitter API. So I know I'm calling an endpoint in Twitter that gives me recent tweets for a user. So I'm gonna call it this first API called recent tweets. And this is where I'm rebuilding that URL that Pathfix provides. So it's a post request. This is what the first half of the URL looked like. Um, 
the private key is already being added to the URL because I've specified that up here. So it's going to add the, the key name and the key value to the URL. Fantastic. I now just need to add the user ID and the public key. So I've just added two parameters. Um, I've left them as private and I've set them to query string. And this is really important. You need to set them to query string so that they're actually appended to the end of this URL and not just set in like the headers or something. Um, but that's, that's as simple as it is. If you're doing a get request, you'll, you'll see that those two options aren't here. Um, but the minute you change that to a post request, you can then specify um, query string parameters. So that's the call to Pathfix sorted. The only thing you need to do now is just tell Pathfix which, um, you know, what, what call you want to make to Twitter or what call you want to make to Google or what call you want to make to Jira. Um, obviously right now we're calling the Twitter API. So I've, I've gone into the docs and kind of figured this out. There's no, you know, there's no shortcut for this really. You have to go do this anyway. So I have a URL here, which is api.twitter.com, you know, forward slash search forward slash recent. My query is I want tweets from Daniel Tidmus. This would obviously be dynamic in your application. I'm just hard coding it here and like, because I need to initialize the call with some data. And the data I want back are public metrics, non-public metrics and created at. So for every tweet you return, you know, these are the fields I want back. Um, public metrics and created at are actually available with just a simple bearer token. Non-public metrics are the only thing I'm asking for that need that OAuth authorization for a user. So I'm, I've just included it there just to kind of prove that this works. Um, but at this stage, we should be ready to make that call. Um, oh, and just before I do, the Pathfix app actually does tell you how you need to structure this body um, by, you know, it, it just provides it here. So URL method payloads and payload, sorry, and any headers if requested by the app that you're calling. So Twitter doesn't need any additional ones, but you can kind of see here, I just, you know, mimicked it on that. So I should be able to now initialize the call or reinitialize the call and that should return a success. So yeah, you'll see the status of success, it's 200 code, and it'll give me an example of the, the, you know, the latest tweet or retweet or post that I sent in Twitter. Um, Non-public metrics are showing, public metrics are showing, the created data showing just exactly as I specified it basically. Um, and now I can go on and, and use that information uh, in my bubble app. So I'm not gonna do that for now, but you know, what I would do potentially with this is just do a, um, you know, get data from external API. I can then kind of change some of these values. So I could, you know, I could say, replace this with the current user's Twitter handle. Um, no, that didn't really work, but you get the idea. I, I won't go into too much detail on that, but as you can see here, like we're, we're able to call that Twitter API um, and Pathfix handle all of that auth authorization and everything for us. Um, and also provides us some nice, nice looking UI to embed on the page as well. So that's about it for this uh, quick demo or quick walkthrough. If you have any questions, please reach out to, you know, either myself um, or the Pathfix team um, and we'll be happy to help. Thanks. Bye.